In the last episode, we saw how new and old powers on the islands of Kyushu and Shikoku began to rise. As the Shimazu clan reconquered old claims and the Chosokabe moved to usurp leadership from their weakening overlords. However, now we must move our gaze back to central Japan as a new battle sits on the horizon. A battle that will shape the future of the country and revolutionize samurai warfare. In 1575, the war between the Oda and Takeda had been raging for roughly two years. Yet, both sides had suffered setbacks. For the Oda, the situation around Kyoto had caused Oda Nobunaga's attention to drift off of the Takeda threat and onto more pressing matters. For he was still deep in a war against the Iko Iki and had only recently been able to overcome his Azai and Asakura enemies. For the Takeda clan, it had been the death of their great leader, Takeda Shingen, in 1573, whose untimely passing had briefly halted their advance. Yet the new leader of the Takeda clan, Takeda Katsuyori, had eventually continued his father's conquest, as by 1574 he began pressing on the Oda again, capturing the Oda castle of Akechi in Mino, and the Tokugawa castle of Taketenjin in Totomi. It was clear that soon the Takeda would attempt another advance on the capital. However, Katsuyori still needed to deal with that same thorn in his side his father had had before him. That thorn being the Tokugawa clan. For a time now, it had been a matter of debate just how the Takeda should deal with the Tokugawa. On one hand, they weren't seen relatively as mighty. Thus, they could potentially be bypassed while token Takeda armies stayed behind to hold them down. On the other hand, they were definitely seen as bold and crafty. Thus, one could never count on everything going according to plan when dealing with them. This lesson had been learned in 1573 during the conflict at Mikatagahara, when Shingen was still leading the Takeda on their campaign. Daimyo Tokugawa Ieyasu was one of Nobunaga's most vital allies, being a key player on the border to the eastern provinces, and whose own territory covered a significant portion of the important Tokaido Road which led to Kyoto. A road which Katsuyori would need in order to march his armies all the way to the capital. In 1575, Katsuyori was offered a substantial chance at crippling the Tokugawa when a traitor began conspiring with the Takeda, offering to open the gates to Ieyasu's capital at Okazaki. This would allow Katsuyori to easily storm it and shatter the Tokugawa. Although much of the Takeda forces were spread out along their territory, securing their borders, Katsuyori would set out at the head of an army numbering around 15,000, a third of the Takeda overall strength, with which he then began his march down into Tokugawa territory. However, while en route, the Tokugawa trader had been exposed and dealt with. Thus, the Takeda would face a much tougher obstacle at Okazaki than anticipated. Not wishing to be bogged down in a long drawn out siege of Ieyasu's capital, Katsuyori instead decided to simply bypass the position and move down south to lay siege to Yoshida Castle. While en route, Takeda forces would burn down several minor Tokugawa forts at Nirengi and Ushikubo. Yet Ieyasu, who himself had been positioned at his castle of Hamamatsu, had anticipated this and had reinforced Yoshida with another 6,000 men. Katsuyori was once again at a loss, not wishing to be held up by a major siege. However, when Tokugawa troops began pouring out of Yoshida to face the Takeda, Katsuyori quickly ordered his vanguard to charge in with the intent of crushing them, just like the Takeda had done at Mikatagahara when Ieyasu had sallied forth. Leading the Takeda vanguard was the prominent samurai Yamagata Masakage. For a while, the Takeda vanguard clashed with the Tokugawa forces outside of Yoshida, Yet quickly, it became clear this was all meant as show, as the real bulk of the Tokugawa forces stayed inside the castle. Instead, once the skirmish was done, both sides fell back. 
Yoshida would remain a heavily manned obstacle. There would be no decisive Takeda victory like there was at Mikatagahara. Thus, Katsuyori instead opted to leave Yoshida behind as well and advance further along the Toyokawa River up to the small castle of Nagashino, which was only manned by 500 men. Believing he could quickly storm and seize the minor fortification, Katsuyori ordered a full attack. Yet still, even with their low numbers, the defenders of Nagashino were able to repel every attempt by Katsuyori to storm the keep, holding off repeated Takeda assaults over four days. And although the Takeda were unable to seize the castle, they were successful in destroying the castle's storehouse, thus allowing Takeda forces to starve out the defenders of Nagashino. However, this put Katsuyori in the position he had been trying to avoid all along, entrenching himself into perhaps a long, drawn-out siege. Still, Katsuyori was somewhat optimistic, given the fact that the storehouse was destroyed. This may allow for a swifter victory. Facing slaughter at the hands of the Takeda at Nagashino, a brave Tokugawa samurai named Tori Tsuneeman decided to take on a dangerous mission. Carefully, he snuck out of the castle and passed through the Takeda siege lines, after which he lit a beacon to signal to the castle that he had safely made it through. He then with haste rushed towards Okazaki to deliver word of the situation. At Okazaki, Nobunaga had arrived at the head of a grand force numbering around 30,000, already twice that of the Takeda. He and Ieyasu had been held up in Okazaki, planning out their next course of action against the Takeda. Upon hearing word from Nagashino, Nobunaga and Ieyasu promised that aid was on the way. Thus, with good news in hand, Tori Tsuneeman began the arduous journey back into the besieged castle to deliver the encouraging news that help was coming. Unfortunately, Tsuneeman wouldn't have the same luck he did when he first made his way through the siege lines and was captured by the Takeda while trying to sneak back in. Upon hearing his story, Katsuyori was amazed at his bravery and offered Tsuneeman a deal in exchange for his life and perhaps even new employment within the Takeda ranks. A deal Tsuneeman would eventually give in to. He would be brought before the castle walls and made to lie to the defenders, telling them that no help was coming. This was an effort to cause them to lose hope and surrender. Thus. Surrounded by Takeda soldiers, Tsuneeman was led before Nagashino Castle and prompted to yell his false information. Instead, he did the opposite, crying out that Oda and Takeda armies were on their way. For this, he was then crucified by the Takeda. Now in a tough spot, with the Oda and Tokugawa armies heading to face him at Nagashino, Katsuyori held a war council with his top generals. The older of the bunch, veterans who had loyally served Shingen such as Baba Nobuharu, Naito Masatoyo, and Yamagata Masakage each urged Katsuyori to withdraw back to Kai province, knowing that the combined might of Nobunaga and Ieyasu could not be defeated here. However, younger commanders such as Atobe Katsusuke argued that it would be cowardly to retreat and that the Takeda had a long history of always achieving victory. It was this mindset Katsuyori was no doubt swayed by. On top of that, this campaign needed a victory. So far, it had amounted to roughly be a complete failure. There needed to be something that made it all worthwhile, and this went hand in hand with the fact that he was still somewhat unproven as a daimyo, and a major victory here would go far to build his reputation and showcase his capability. Thus, Katsuyori emerged from the War Council determined to stand his ground and face the Oda Tokugawa forces here. To this end, Baba Nobuharu suggested that if Katsuyori really wished to do battle at Nagashino, it should be done from within the castle, meaning that Takeda forces should attempt one last all-out assault of the fortress in attempt to take it before their enemies arrived. If Nagashino could be captured, the Takeda could use it to mount a determined defensive effort against the large numbers of the Oda and Tokugawa. Yet once again, Katsuyori would dismiss the advice from his senior advisors and instead decide to face the enemy in the open, where the famed Takeda cavalry could truly shine. Believing this to be somewhat suicidal, the elder Takeda generals came together and shared a final cup of sake on the eve of battle. On the night of June 27th, 
the Oda and Tokugawa forces arrived several kilometers west of Nagashino, on the plain known as Shidarahara, boasting a combined army numbering around 38,000, more than twice that of the Takeda. The position they took was one Nobunaga believed would be perfect for arranging his forces without interruption. The main threat on the minds of Ieyasu and Nobunaga was no doubt the fearsome Takeda cavalry, which just two years prior had completely shattered the Tokugawa and Oda forces at Mikatagahara. This had caused Nobunaga to begin speculating on successful methods of stopping the devastating cavalry attack. Now, it's quite clear that Nobunaga had been an ardent practitioner of Western firearms. However, since their introduction into Japan in 1543, it had always been a large debate on how to best implement them. The greatest usage of them had been defensively, and no one had excelled at this better than the Ikoiki, who had used them spectacularly in holding off the Oda while they were besieged at Ishiyama and Nagashima. This may have had an impact on Nobunaga, who now believed the best method for halting the Takeda cavalry would be to use firearms in mass. Thus, he would deploy the largest concentration of firearms Japan had ever seen. He positioned his forces in a line along the hills of Shidarahara, and called forth a large quantity of timber he brought with him so that it could be fashioned into palisades. On the opposite side, Katsuyori began a final war council, where he broke his army apart in preparation for the next day's attack. The Takeda forces would be split five ways, 3,000 would stay behind to maintain the siege of Nagashino, while the other four groups would take part in the attack. Leading the offensive, we can see three prominent figures, the same senior retainers who had previously spoken out against this battle. They were arranged as follows. There'd be a left group under the command of Yamagata Masakage, a center group under Naito Masatoyo, a right group under Baba Nobuharu, and a rear headquarters where Katsuyori would establish himself. Back in the Oda Tokugawa camp, a Tokugawa retainer named Sakai Tadetsugu convinced Nobunaga to allow him to lead a raid against the Takeda siege lines at Nagashino. Thus, Nobunaga placed 3,000 men under his command, and quietly, he crept off around the Takeda forces to set up position near Nagashino, waiting for the morning. As the dawn began to sweep over the land on June 28th, Nobunaga positioned 3,000 of his own gunners along the palisade line. The gunners were arranged three ranks deep, and would rotate and reload as they fired. They were broken into groups led by Nobunaga's Horoshu, his personal bodyguard, who also served as his finest and most loyal samurai. This goes to show the level of discipline Nobunaga wished his battle line to possess. At 6 a.m., Katsuyori ordered his attack to commence. Three vanguard cavalry units under the command of Yamagata Masakage, Naito Masatoyo, and Baba Nobuharu charged forth with incredible momentum. The only initial hindrance was the shallow water of the Rengogawa, which the cavalry had to cross. However, it was then that the horsemen began to enter within 50 meters of the Oda lines, and the order was given to open fire. This was considerably very close in terms of matchlock guns. The initial wave of bullets was expected. However, what was not expected was the quick second round, followed by a swift third. A hail of gunfire quickly cut the cavalry charge into pieces. Many riders who made it through were met by Oda Samurai and Ashigaru who quickly surrounded and killed any stragglers. However, the Takeda would persist, and after two hours of battle raging on the field at Shidarahara, at around 8 a.m., Sakai Taretsugu launched his rear assault on the Takeda siege line at Nagashino Castle. He broke his strike force into three groups and began simultaneous raids on Takeda positions. In the chaos of the fighting, seeing that a relief effort had arrived, the weathered Tokugawa defenders of Nagashino sallied out from their castle and joined the fray. By 9 a.m., back in Shidarahara, the situation was still developing. In the center, the group led by Naito Masatoyo had completely stalled out, as successive waves of cavalry were unable to make a dent in Oda positions. On the right flank, the forces led by Baba Nobuharu were also facing difficulties, and were forced to fall back. However, while Nobuharu withdrew to rest his men, 
a Takeda relief force under the command of the Sanada brothers, Sanada Nobutsuna and Sanada Nobuteru, arrived. Nobutsuna and Nobuteru were sons of the late Sanada Yukitaka, a prominent lord from Shinano and senior Takeda retainer. A third and younger Sanada brother, Sanada Masayuki, was also present at Nagashino, but was elsewhere in the fighting. The relief force under the command of Sanada Nobutsuna and Nobuteru pressed forth with ferocity and smashed through the Oda lines. This put them in close combat with forces under the command of Shibata Katsuie and Hashiba Hideyoshi. And after a brutal struggle, both Sanada brothers were eventually slain. Baba Nobuharu would follow this up with another assault, but would once again be repelled. On the left side, Yamagata Masakage also had seen some success breaking through, as he led his troops through a hail of bullets and into fierce melee combat against the Oda Tokugawa line, as he pressed forth to engage Honda Tadakatsu. And as his forces continued to break through to engage in an intense up-close struggle, Masakage would eventually be shot off of his horse and decapitated by nearby hostile samurai. With things looking increasingly grim, Katsuyori ordered a general charge of all remaining Takeda units, as even he himself, along with his personal bodyguard, entered the fight. Unfortunately, it did little to change the situation, and the battle would rage on until about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Around then, Oda Nobunaga ordered his forces to pull back. As he did so, the Takeda army seized the opportunity and began a full retreat. Upon seeing this, Nobunaga changed his command and ordered his forces to pursue the fleeing Takeda. As Oda and Tokugawa forces rushed back over the field, Naito Masatoyo was overcome and gunned down. Another major Takeda figure to be slain was Baba Nobuharu, as he took the role of the rear guard covering Katsuyori's retreat. He would stand his ground against incoming enemy samurai, who fought him to the death. After eight hours of intense struggle, the Battle of Nagashino came to a close. In the end, the Takeda army lost around 10,000 men, including many senior retainers and prominent generals. On the Oda Tokugawa side, the casualties amounted to roughly 6,000. A hefty loss of life, but nowhere near as significant as the tragic losses inflicted upon the Takeda. Katsuyori would return to Kai, and never set out on another offensive. The Takeda were effectively crippled. One can only speculate how the situation could have been different had Katsuyori had heeded the advice of his senior officers. If victory could have somehow been achieved by the Takeda, one can only wonder how Katsuyori could have gone on to impact Japan, as instead of taking a defensive position, he paid the ultimate price. Nobunaga was an experienced and crafty general, he knew how devastating the effects of firearms were, so much so that they could stop a large cavalry charge dead in its tracks. In a single battle, he displayed this, and forever changed the implementation of firearms in Japan, as from this point on, they would begin to be utilized in massive firing lines, similarly to how they would be utilized in the West. The age of the might of the Takeda was at an end, and with their defeat at Nagashino, Nobunaga was now free to continue his grand campaign for control of the land. So, what can we learn? In 1575, Takeda Katsuyori began a new offensive to take on the Tokugawa and Oda clans. Beginning his campaign on the promise of an easy victory at the Tokugawa capital, he would soon find it to be a tougher challenge than he anticipated, causing him to move onward and assault various other Tokugawa fortifications. Eventually settling on the small castle of Nagashino. His initial attempts to seize the castle failed, causing him to begin a prolonged siege, which allowed Oda Nobunaga and Tokugawa Ieyasu time to arrive on the scene. Dismissing the advice of his senior retainers, Katsuyori would decide to take the fight to his enemy in a grand scale. In anticipation for this, Nobunaga craftily devised a plan to break the Takeda charge, amassing thousands of matchlock firearms. This would prove to be the ultimate deciding factor, as with the Takeda charge broken, they would be ultimately unable to push back the Oda and Tokugawa forces. In the end, the Takeda were forced to retreat, having lost massive casualties and many top commanders, in essence, crippling the Takeda completely. While Nobunaga can be seen to have revolutionized samurai warfare. In the next episode, 
Uesugi Kenshin enters center stage once again, threatening Oda territory and eventually clashing with Nobunaga's forces at the Battle of Teidorigawa. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.